Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Okay. Um, today we have Claudia Yanet, Imelda Sanchez, Jenny Sanchez, uh, Rufino Amilca Hernández, Manuel Aristides, Claudia Yanet, Imelda Sanchez. We have many Sanchezes here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Everybody, welcome once again. Luis um, Alonso Urias, teacher. Luis Alonso. Oh, yes. Here we are. I'm sorry. Okay, Luis Alonso. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's begin. Traigo tu libreta. Um, just a moment. Okay. Let's begin. I'm going to start sharing the screen with you now. Just give me a moment. Here we go. Can you see the screen I'm sharing? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Give me a moment. Yes. It's, it's the blue screen, yes. right? Yes. 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 Okay. Blue All right. Screen. Okay. So everybody take a look at this. Here's what we're going to do. This is um, Inglés Intermedio Modulo 3. All right. And that's me, Ivan Donyang, at your service. This is Intermediate 3, session number two. And today is October the 12th, uh, 2022. So everybody be welcome. OK, so we're going to start. So what are we going to do today? Well, we have to continue with the objective from last time. In this class, participants will be first introduced to the passive voice using by, OK? And uh, we're going to start with this. It's a review, okay? Let's review the structure of a passive sentence. So how does this work? First, we have an active sentence, okay? They built the Eiffel Tower in 1889. So that's an active sentence. They built the Eiffel Tower in 1889. So we need to transform this sentence into the passive voice. Then how do you do that? Do you remember the steps that we studied yesterday? Luis wants to participate. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, in this example, uh, is uh, the Eiffel Towers, they built by in 1989. OK. All right, so we have a version of the passive sentence. Um, question is, do you agree with uh, Luis here? Or does anybody have a different version? It was good, but there is a little problem. Who can help us? ¿Quién nos ayuda? Who can help us here? Was, le faltó el verbo. OK, so yes. uh, Manuel Aristides, OK. Okay, uh, what would be the passive sentence? Um, the Eiffel to Tower was the... Um, no. uh, mm -hmm. The Eiffel Tower was? So far, was, so good. Was uh, built mm -hmm. by the... In, okay. okay. Uh, well, by they, all right. Mm, very good, but there is a problem at the end. Okay, Imelda wanted to participate. Yeah, maybe the Eiffel Tower was built uh, by they in 1889. 1889, okay, but it's the same sentence, okay, <laughs> uh, that Ma uh, Manuel Aristides uh, shared with us. Uh, Rufino wants to participate. Uh, they, uh, no, the Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower uh, was, the Eiffel Tower was, was built by mm -hmm. in in 1889. The Eiffel Tower was built in 1889. Well, let's take yeah. a look. Let's take a look. So um, first you need to identify the verb. 
of course, right? The verb is built. And you know that this is the main verb and it's in past simple, okay? So two things to know right there. First, what's the main verb? And number two, what verb tense it is in, okay? So next you need to identify the subject and the subject is they, okay? They built the Eiffel Tower in 1889. And after that, Imelda wants to participate. Then isn't was mm -hmm. era where? Where? Not exactly. No, no. no it's a bit no. different. No, don't worry. Don't worry. It's okay. okay. It's okay. Don't worry. It's fine. So they built the Eiffel Tower in 1889. So, you know, we have the subject, they, then you have the verb, which is built. And uh, we know it's in past simple. And after that, you identify the object. And what is the object? The object is the Eiffel Tower. Why? Because we say they built what? The answer is the Eiffel Tower. That's the object. And then we have this in 1889. This is a phrase that indicates time. So to form the passive sentence, you have to use the object from the active sentence at the beginning. And then you say the Eiffel Tower. After that, you have the verb be. And the verb be should be in past simple. Why past simple? Because it's the same verb tense that we identified in the active sentence. So the Eiffel Tower was, and after that, you need the main verb, which is build, but in past participle. Build is an irregular verb. The past participle is also built. So the Eiffel Tower was built. And then we have in 1889. Now, this is a lesson for, our, for a different uh, day, but I have to mention this today, okay? Esto es como una lección para un día distinto, siempre en esta unidad, en, este, en esta sección, pero lo vamos a mencionar ahorita. Veamos. Tenemos by. By is a preposition, okay? After a preposition, you have to use an object pronoun. And what are object pronouns? Well, we have this. We have subject, say pronouns, and we have object pronouns. And what are the subject pronouns? Well, you know them and they are very easy to learn. The subject pronouns include I, you, sorry, you, he, she, it, we, and they. Those are the subject pronouns. But the subject pronouns have an equivalent, and the equivalent is the object pronoun. Do you know the object pronouns? What is the object pronoun for the subject pronoun I? Do you know? No idea? No problem. The object pronoun is me. Me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. The object pronoun is me. In the case of you, it is you. It doesn't change. In the case of he, what is that? His. His is a possessive adjective. Him. Oh, him. Him. Yeah, him. 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 Mm -hmm. him. 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 Yeah. That's the word. Okay, very good. It is him. In the case of the subject pronoun she, the object pronoun is her. 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 That's right. Her. Very good. Her. In the case of it, what do we have? It. 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 Very good. It's the same. It's the same. It doesn't change. What about we? Our. Our, Our. is a possessive adjective. Oh. Uh, your. Um. Your. Your. Um. Um. Again, have a, raise your hand. <laughs> raise your hand, please. It's oh. not your. Uh huh. Oh. Again, please. Okay, Jenny. Ow. Oh. Our. Ow. Oh. Not exactly. It's a bit different. Okay. Two letters only. Us. 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 Okay, us. it is us. That's the object pronoun, us. And in the case of the subject pronoun, they, what's the object pronoun? 
the hair. It is them. them. Mm -hmm. So these are the object pronouns. There is a rule. After a preposition, by is a preposition, you have to use an object pronoun and never a subject pronoun. Por eso eh, escuché bastante la respuesta, pero está bien, ¿verdad? Porque estamos aprendiendo. Me decían by they. Ahí tenemos un problema. Porque después de by siempre va un object pronoun. Nunca un subject pronoun. ¿Ok? ¿Por qué? Porque by es una by preposition. Them. Tiene que ser by them. ¿Ok? That's right. So, that's it. Pero si se fijan, no lo, no lo utilizamos. No pusimos by them aquí. ¿Por qué será? ¿Quién sabe la respuesta? Because uh, the, uh, uh, we know, we know uh, the, the two parts. Uh, they, we, we, we know they, they built. Uh, uh, we know that the construction will, uh, I, I am a little confused that the video, the video 1.1, one one, mm -hmm. I think, I think is this a, an answer to mm -hmm. this question. Uh, You're a little uh, confused about video 1.1. One one. Yes, uh, because in the, in the teacher in the video, mm -hmm. explain uh, the three options when we use we use by uh, after he explain other example mm -hmm. for for this i i am i a little confused a little confused <laughs> okay we're going to take a look at the video then so that we can explain okay imelda wants to participate yeah i i, I guess is because we don't know exactly who built. Mm -hmm. Exactly, that's how it is. Uh, Francisco, wanted to participate? Yes, I think uh, because the day is um, the year and the will, uh, in all, in all, will buy. O sea, okay. Yo, yo pienso que eh, no sé si me voy a entender, pero eso lo voy a decir en español. Okay. Pero yo pienso que aquí la diferencia por qué no se usó fue porque están hablando de el año en que fue creado y no por quién fue creado. Mhm. Uh -huh. Va más o menos por ahí, porque es es más importante la fecha en la que fue creada y el hecho de que la Torre Eiffel fue creada o fue construida y no quienes lo hicieron. Eso al final es un poquito irrelevante. Entonces, si decimos they, ellos, pero ¿quiénes fueron ellos? A saber, un grupo de gente lo hizo. Pero eso no nos interesa. Lo que nos interesa más bien es que la construyeron en 1889. Entonces, la acción se centra en eso y no en quienes lo hicieron. Por eso no lo mencionamos. Pero no hay problema en esto. Lo vamos a ver en más detalle cuando lleguemos a ese punto porque es parte de esta eh, unidad, digamos. La primera unidad o la primera sección. Ahí aparece el passive without by. Y vamos a explicar eso también. Ok, so you have, they built the Eiffel Tower in 1889. Entonces decimos, the Eiffel Tower was built in 1889. So thank you, uh, Francisco. Thank you, Imelda, also. Um, that's the idea. So, very important. Take a look at this. This is the passive voice. You need the verb be, and then you need the main verb in past participle. So let's talk about past participles, okay? You know there are regular verbs and there are irregular verbs. Give me a moment. Okay. Just a second. Ah, I have a chat entry. Estela Lara says, good evening. Hello, <laughs> Estela. Welcome. Okay. 
Hi. So um, we have this, take a look. We have regular verbs and uh, irregular verbs. So examples of regular verbs include agree. This is one. What is the past form and what is the past participle of the verb agree? Mm -hmm. What is the past form of agree? Do you know? Please raise your hand. Does anybody know? Agreed. 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 Okay, with ED, right? The past form is agreed. The past participle is also agreed. That's right. You know, regular verse end in D, E, D, or I, E, D. So then we have the verb brush. What is the past of brush and the past participle? Brush. Brushed. Okay, you have brushed with E, D. What about clean? What is the past and past participle of clean? Cleaned. Mm -hmm. Cleaned. Okay. Cleaned with ed. Very good. What about decide? What is the past and past participle? Decided. 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 Okay. Decided. Past form. Past participle. Also decided. What about the verb enjoy? Can you tell me the past form and the past participle? Enjoyed. Enjoyed. Very good. Okay. The past participle is also enjoyed. What about the verb help? Help. Okay. Good. Uh, just the pronunciation is helped. Helped. Uh huh. Good. Helped. And the past helped. participle is also helped. Okay. Great. Yes. What about the verb open? What's the past form and past open. participle? Open. 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 Okay, opened and past participle is opened. Very good. What about the verb travel? Traveled. Traveled. Very good. Traveled. Okay, and the past participle is also traveled. So as you can see right here, right, when you have regular verbs, the past form and the past participle are the same. Also, it's good because they follow a series of rules. If you know the rules on how to make the past form, then you know how to make the past participle too. The problem is here with the irregular verbs. We have a little problem. And the problem is they don't follow the rules. Okay? And if they don't follow the rules, then there is only one solution to knowing them. You need to memorize them. That's the only way. There is no other way. So let's have some examples. You have the verb be. What is the past of the verb be? Was aware. Was aware. Was aware. Correct. And the past participle? Been. Been. That's right. Been. What about the verb become? What's the past to become? Became. 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 And the past participle? Become. Become. become okay become. in this case become is the same as the base form okay it's become yes. became become what about the verb choose what's the past of choose, choose. Mm -hmm. chose chose and the past chose. participle chosen chosen chosen. Chosen. chosen it's chosen very good okay what about the verb fall what's the past of fall Failed. 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 And the past participle? Fallen. Fallen. That's right. Fallen. It's fallen. fallen. Very good. What about the verb forget? What's the past of forget? Forgot. 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 And the past participle? Forgotten. 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 Very good. Good. Forgotten. What about the verb leave? No. Leave. The past of leave? Left. 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 And the past participle? Left. left. It's also left. Okay. Left. What about the verb put? What's the past of put? Put, put, put. 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 And the past participle? Put. put. It's also put. put. Very good. Okay. No change here. And uh, mm. we have one more. What about the verb speak? What's the past of speak? Speak. Spoke. 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 Okay. Spoke. Spoken. Spoken. And the past participle spoken. Okay. We don't know si Spock, si no aquel personaje que salía en Star Trek, ben, Viaje de las Estrellas. <laughs> yes. Así con la orejita. Spock. Para, es, es spoke. 
spoke. Uh -huh. spoke. Spoke and then spoken. Spoken. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so uh, next exercise. First, let me check how many people there are. Wow, 20, 20 connected. That's, that's a lot. That's great. Well, um, let's remember this. We have an active and a passive sentence. This is the same example we studied yesterday. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Okay. So in an active sentence, the subject, and the subject in this case is Alexander Graham Bell, does the action of the verb. He invented the telephone. Okay. The subject, Alexander Graham Bell, does the action. He invented the telephone. Okay, but in the passive sentence, it's a bit different. You say the telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. In a passive sentence, the subject, and the subject here is the telephone, doesn't do the action of the verb. In this case, it receives the action of the verb. The telephone didn't do anything. El teléfono no hizo nada. Because Alexander, it's not Agent. It's not the agent. Exactly. The agent, mm -hmm. yes. the agent is Alexander Graham Bell. Alex. He yes. did the action of the verb. Exactly. Very good. That's yes. the idea. Okay. El teléfono no hizo nada. Al teléfono lo hicieron. Así que recibe la acción del verbo. Esa es la diferencia entre active y passive. Okay. Very, very important. Let me see. We have an exercise right here. And uh, for this, we're going to be working in some groups. Let's see, five groups of four people. Okay, we have this. This is your turn, okay? Select the correct active or passive form. I am going to give you some minutes for you to work in the breakout rooms. I'm going to form five. Well, we were 20, now we are 19. Well, um, I'm going to prepare them and I'm going to prepare, let's see, five groups. Okay, so for room number one, we have Astrid Michel, Griselda Elizabeth, Luis Alonso Urias, and Luis Enrique. Okay, room two, Estela Lara, Francisco Isaac, Morena Medina, and Olivia Osorio. Room three, Imelda Sanchez, Natalia Alejandra, Paola Maria and Rufino Amilcar. Room four, Claudia Janet, Manuel Aristides, Roberto Tobar, Sonia Guadalupe. Demos Hidráulica S.A. de S.B. Hay que cambiar el nombre, por favor. José Vega and Jenny Sánchez. Ok. Siempre pongamos este... Eh, nuestro nombre completo al ingresar. Muchas veces ya está, ya viene como determinado por la cuenta, pero siempre al ingresar, acordémonos que hay que cambiarle ahí, ¿verdad? Para no confundirnos. Ok, así que vamos a empezar. I'm going to open the breakout rooms. Please, everybody, join them. And I'm going to visit them one by one. Remember that I'm going to send this picture to you via WhatsApp. Ok, let's begin. Okay, everybody, I just sent you the picture via WhatsApp. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Yes, okay, teacher. great. Okay, so you have to read the text and select the correct form to complete each of the sentences.
Uh -huh. Pero en grupito, no individual. Ah, so try to communicate. Okay, so let's have the first one. Okay, let's let's check the first one. Fiat. The first one is a star kit. What's a star okay. kit? Uh, Astrid says, bueno, me dio dos respuestas ahí. No sé si es started or was started. No, was was. Was started. Okay. Yes. Fiat was started by a group of Italian businessmen in 1899. That is correct. Okay. Fiat was started. Why? Because the company didn't start itself. No se comenzó ella sola. No, hubo un grupo de personas que la comenzaron. So, in this case, Fiat receives the action of the verb. It's not the agent. The agent is a group of Italian businessmen. Okay? Yes. So, that's the first one. Okay, very good. I want you to continue, but I need you to communicate. Okay? Don't just, don't do the exercise individually. Okay? Talk. That's, that's the idea of the group. Para eso están apartaditos en un breakout room para que se comuniquen. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go into a different room. Please um, wait for me. I'll be back. Hi. Hi, I need a problem. I know, no sé si es mi internet o qué, pero escucho por todo y con interferencia. No sé si es que todos son soy yo. Um, bueno, no sé si los compañeros tienen una, eh, si tienen un problema parecido. Sí, así. Se va la, por rato la señal. Uh -huh. ¿Es cuando les hablo yo o cuando están ahorita trabajando entre ustedes? Porque ahorita les escucho como un poquito cortado. Lo que hagan es encender los micrófonos. Ah. Sí, porque les escuché cuando me estaban contando, eh, les escuché ese problema, como que se oía un poquito cortado. Tal vez tenemos un poquito de problema de conexión. Aquí me aparece la señal como que está nítida. Pero no sé cómo estará al lado de ustedes. A lo mejor ahí tenemos un poquito de interferencia. Les recomiendo siempre que cuando se conecten a la clase, de ser posible, yo sé que es más fácil decirlo que hacerlo, pero de ser posible, ¿verdad? Que les digan a, su, a los miembros de su familia que procuren, digamos, no estar viendo Netflix o YouTube o que se salgan un ratito del TikTok y todo eso, ¿verdad? Porque si están, ¿verdad?, utilizando parte del ancho de banda, entonces eso les va a afectar a ustedes también. Nice. There's the picture. Okay. Explication, please. I don't understand. An, an explanation. Nothing. An explanation. Okay. You need to select the correct active or passive form. No sé qué va acá. Por ejemplo, Fiat started or Fiat was started by a group of Italian businessmen in 1899. It was started. Was started. Correct. Yes. That's the correct form. Fiat, the company, Fiat, was started by a group of Italian businessmen in 1899. That's the thing. So you need to select the active form. The active is started. Or the passive form. The passive is was started. Ahí depende mucho, ¿verdad? Lo que estaba explicando hace un momento. Si el sujeto hace la acción del verbo, entonces van a, su, van a seleccionar el active voice. Pero si la recibe, porque alguien más lo hizo, entonces selecciona en el passive voice. Eso sería. Entonces necesito que se comuniquen ahorita, ¿verdad? Y que vayan leyendo el ejercicio juntos y vayan decidiendo cuál es. ¿Ok? Así como me dijo ahorita Estela, que Fiat was started by a group of Italian businessmen in 1899. That's the first one. ¿Ok? So okay. I'm going to go into a different room now. See you later. See you later. But if we... The last one. 
the last one uh, I little bit do but uh, <laughs> today fiat is based in Turin and its <laughs> cars are sold all over world over that the world that is correct yeah. Sí, mm -hmm. lo que dice el compañero es que está algo confundido por esa frase. Its cars are sold all over the world. ¿Por qué ocupamos Pero are sold? Fueron vendidos alrededor Así de es, mundo. porque los autos no se venden solitos, sino que alguien más los vende. Mm. Ajá. Ajá, entonces ellos reciben la acción del verbo, no la hacen. So, es uh, the, second, the second option. It's the second option, correct? Yeah, correct. Uh, mm -hmm. Very good. So mm -hmm. have you finished the exercise? Yes. Wow, yes. very fast. Okay, very nice. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I'm going to jump into a different room. See you later. Thank you. Yeah. Uno le uno las de frente porque al final uno quiere aprender, pero no tiene la láxico, pero está mejor que la el teacher de ahora que la vez pasada. Hola, teacher. Hi, hi. El teacher está ahí, que hemos entrado, mejor estoy en la plataforma. Vaya, no, ahora. Entré, entré en Robert, buen momento, entré en buen momento, Robert, ya vi. Roberto, explica lo que estaba explicando. No, yo no, 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 ahí no, ahí no, no, ahí no, no, ahí no, 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 no puedo, yo no puedo. Estábamos okay. consolando, no nosotros mismos. Híjole. Pero bueno, bueno. Eh, creemos que, creemos que, que ya lo resolvimos. A ver, qué. cabal, creemos. Creemos. Ok, ok. La número uno pensamos que es was a start. Correct. Ok. Oh. What? La dos. La dos pensamos que es produce. 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 Yes. Produce. produce. Mm -hmm. la, la tres creemos que es worth. Worth. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. La tercera, la cuarta pensamos que es start. Mm -hmm. La quinta pensamos que es were tested. Mm -hmm. La sexta pensamos que es was caught. Was, was, was called. Was called. Was called. Was called. Yes. Uh -huh. was called. Yes. La séptima pensamos que es exported. Exported. Yes. Exported. Y la octava pensamos que es are sold. Perfect. Perfect. Ah. <laughs> Great. Very good. Nice. Bueno, okay. ya vi ustedes. Están listos para el examen. Ok. No, no, I don't know. No. You're ready for an exam. Yes. No, no, no. I'm going to go into a different room now. Ok, see you in a few minutes. Good job. Thank you. ves? Hi. Hi, teacher. Please help. Okay. Help I will help you. So what seems to be the problem? Have you finished uh, the exercise? We don't understand what we <gasps> do. Oh, really? Okay, okay. No problem. You, need to, you need to select the correct act, active or passive form. Por ejemplo, tenemos la primera. Fiat started or Fiat was started by a group of Italian businessmen in 1899. ¿Cuál de las dos sería? In, in, in passive form. Passive form. So what is the correct option? Was started. Correct. That's what you need to do. You need to select the correct option. In the second line, uh, Fiat, Fiat produce. Mm -hmm. Very good. Fiat produce, active voice. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in the uh -huh. Hay dos hay que seleccionar una. You have to select one option out of the two. 
Ah, ok. Ok. okay. Nice. Por acá tenemos, voy a aprovechar. Este, me regala su nombre por acá porque ah, me aparece Hidráulica SADCB. Gladys Campos. Gladys Campos, vaya. Eh, si es posible es que cambiar. No, es, yo prácticamente cuando entro, entro con mi correo. Uh -huh. Pero siempre al entrar se puede cambiar también el nombre. No, no entro cuando entro con el nombre. Ah, de veras. Pero, sí. pero ya estando en la reunión se puede cambiar. ¿Cómo si, lo hago? Si nos vamos, bueno, por lo menos así lo hago yo. No sé si va a resultar igual. Si nos vamos a participantes, si usted le da clic a participantes, ahí le van a aparecer la lista. Entonces, búsquese donde aparece usted, que sería hidráulica SADCB, y al hacerle con el puntero, pasarle encimita, va a ver que a la derecha aparece un botón con tres puntitos. Sí. Le da clic y ahí le da a cambiar nombre. Ok. Y ahí ya le puede poner su nombre, ¿verdad? De acuerdo. Uh -huh. Gracias. Bueno. Ok. Good. Um, I am going to close the breakout rooms now, okay? Because we need to check the exercise. Bye, teacher. Bye bye. Okay, we're closing the breakout rooms now. In 60 seconds, we will continue. Imelda, did you want to uh, ask something? Actually, yes. Uh, okay. Our group ha have uh, a little trouble with with a number. <laughs> a number. Ah, yeah. okay. What number? Um, Three hundred mil. How do you say 300 mil? 300 Where is that? Ah, 300,000. 300,000. Mm -hmm. 300,000. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, can you see the screen? Can you see the exercise? Yes, teacher. Okay, great. Yes. All right. Let's uh, do this. So, um, the first one, Fiat. Raise your hand, please, volunteers. Jenny. Fiat was started by a group of Italian businessmen in 1899. Yes, Fiat was started by a group of Italian businessmen in 1899. Very good, thank you. What about the second sentence? I need a volunteer, please. Raise your hand. Your digital hand. Mm -hmm. Francisco Isaac. Um, in in nineteen oh three. We had produced we had produced a one hundred thirty two cars. Yes. Very good. Okay, Fiat produced 132 cars. Uh, Luis Alonso was raising his hand. Do you want to go for the next one? Uh, thank you, Francisco Isaac, very good. Um, I don't know, uh, Luis, if you wanted to go for the next one. Yes, Okay. some of this car were exported by the company 
to the United States and um, Britain. Yeah, some of these cars were exported by the company to the United States and Britain. Export. Very good. Thank you, Luis. That was great. Okay, Griselda wants to participate now. And then Natalie, Alejandra. Okay, so Griselda and then Natalie. Griselda? Okay, teacher. Uh, in, in 19, no. 19. In, in 1920, mm -hmm. we had started making cars at a new factory uh, at Lingoto near Turin. Correct, very good. Uh, Natalie, next, that's yours. It was a track of the roof where the cars were just by technicals. By technicians. Technicians. Yes, there was a track on the roof where the cars were tested by technicians. Very good. Correct answer. Thank you. What about the next one? Volunteer, please raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Who wants to go? Who wants to participate? Imelda. In 1936, Fiat launched the Fiat 500. This car was called the Topolino. Mm -hmm. This car was called the Topolino. Okay. The Italian name for Mickey Mouse. That's the name. Okay. In Italian, Topolino. Okay. So very good, Imelda. Thank you. What about the next one? Estela. The company Green uh, in 1963. 63. 63 Fiat Sport. More than. No, second place. Okay. 300,000. 300,000 vehicles. Mm -hmm. The company grew, and in 1963, Fiat exported more than 300,000 vehicles. Very good. Thank you, Estela. And the last one, who wants to try? Sonia. Fiat, uh, today Fiat is based in Turin and its cars are sold all over the world. Great, okay, very good. Today Fiat is based in Turin and its cars are sold all over the world. Very good, great, let's continue. Bueno, esto eh, me parece súper bien. Tienen una idea muy clara de cuándo se utiliza Active Voice y cuándo se utiliza Passive Voice. Solo eso es una gran, gran, gran ganancia para ustedes. Así que, congratulations. It was very good. Remember, with passives, we are mostly interested in the action. In other words, we're interested in what happens. Okay. The missing girl was found. Now, if you want to say who or what does the action, you need to use by. Si usted quiere decir quién hizo la acción, entonces hay que utilizar by. The, uh, sorry. The missing girl was found by a French family. Again, the earrings were made in the first century BC. That's before Christ. The earrings were made by a Roman goldsmith. Okay, that's the idea. You use by when you want to indicate the agent and you consider the agent is important. You want to say who or what does the action. Imelda, do you have a question? Yes, yeah, teacher. Mm -hmm. What does mean goldsmith? A goldsmith is a person who works with gold. Okay, uh, thank mm -hmm. you. they heat up the gold and then they make beautiful things with the gold. That's a goldsmith, like rings or necklaces or bracelets, earrings, etc. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Another exercise, let's take a look at this. Vamos a resolver este ejercicio y luego vamos a echarle un vistazo al video que nos decían, verdad, ahora... 
¿Quién fue que me dijo? Me dijo, me dijo. Ah, Amilcar dijo, ¿verdad? Que tenía un poquito de confusión ahí. Vamos a echarle un vistazo. ¿no? So the passive voice, everybody, take a look. Complete each sentence with by and the best expression from the box. In the box, you have a farmer, a tree, loud music, a committee, and the government. So you need to use by and one element from the box. What about the first one? Who wants to try? Estela. <laughs> oh, what happened? Hi, estaba en silencio. Ah, ah sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, como uh, okay, the, 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 the whole sentence, please. The name of a new school. The name of the new school. The school was designed by a community. A committee of parents. of parents. The name of the new school was decided by a committee of parents. Okay, very good. Thank you, Estela. That was great. What about the second one? Participants, please. Astrid Michelle. Most of the cost of my university education is paid by the government. Most of the cost of my university is paid by the government. Very good. Thank you, Asti. Excellent. Uh, the next one, please. Who wants to participate? Mm -hmm. Don't be shy. No tengan miedo al éxito. Long. Imelda. Long music. Oh, well, Morena. Morena was telling us the answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I love music. Okay. The whole sentence, Morena, please. Or all the neighbor where walker go along by lot music. Coming from the park. Okay. All the neighbors were woken up by loud music coming from the park. Coming Thank you, the park. Morena. Very good. Yes. Solo siempre. Hay que levantar la manita, ¿verdad? Es que ah, no la encuentro, no puedo creer que no sé que dónde está. Vaya, le vamos a ayudar, quiero ver. Ayúdeme. Se va a... ya no sé dónde era. ¿Reacciones? Ah, reacciones, ahí ah, le aparece la manita. Ajá. Quiero ver. Ah, sí es cierto. Ahí right. está. Ok, uh -huh. gracias. Ok. Ok, so the next one, who wants to try? Stella wants to try, ok, let's do it. Adivas of Roma. Jewelry. Jewelry was found in a field by the government. Government. Ah, but in, we use the government, team. so we can't use it. it a farmer. Different. By okay, Manuel says by a farmer. Uh huh. Okay, in England, that is the correct answer. Okay, thank you, okay. Manuel. Pero siempre, siempre levantemos la manita, ¿verdad? Porque uh, sorry, tenemos sorry, compañeros sorry. que están como en espera, ¿verdad? Okay, but thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, also, thank you, Stella, for your participation. Olivia wants to participate. Olivia, the last one, please. The road was done by, uh, by the government. By the government. That fell over in the storm. And Sorry. ya usamos by the government. Um, excuse me, a uh, tree. By, by a, a tree. tree. Okay, good. The roof was damaged by a tree that fell over in the storm. Okay, good. Tipo la tormenta tropical que tuvimos. Hubo varios daños de ese tipo. So the roof was damaged by a tree that fell over in the storm. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Ok, vamos a echarle un pequeño vistazo, ¿verdad? Al video que nos decía Amilcar para esclarecer cualquier eh, duda que tengamos por ahí. Era 1.1, está el video, The Passive with Pie. Vamos a ver, sale ahí Miss Jessica explicando la situación. Wow, lo dejé en super velocidad esto. Okay. 
más o menos, Amilcar, ¿en qué parte sería? ¿Es por acá o más adelante? Ah, ah, bueno, yo esperaba que diera ejemplos de estas tres acciones. Eh, ah, lo que está después, acá ahorita. Sí, después, okay. después cambia a, a otros ejemplos que me dejaron confuso. Eh. Claro, okay. me lo está aclarando ahorita con, con las clases, pero estas uh -huh. partes eh, no, eh, no la vi en los ejemplos que dio después ella. Ok, vamos. Entonces, passive voice is best way to express an idea when we don't know who did the action. Vamos a ocupar mi pizarrita de, de notepad. <laughs> ok, tenemos, we don't know who did the action. We use uh, the passive voice. Is the passive voice when the agent is number one, unknown. Okay, that's the first one. We use the passive voice when the agent is unknown. En otras palabras, lo que dice acá, when we don't know who did the action. Si usted no sabe quién lo hizo, entonces ahí se ocupa eh, the passive voice. Ejemplo, there's an example. Let me think, let me think. Okay, yeah. Somebody invented the wheel 5,000 years ago. Bueno, alguien tuvo que haber inventado la rueda, ¿verdad? Pero ¿quién fue? Creo que ningún historiador puede decir, ah, sí, fue un cavernícola llamado fulano de tal que se inventó la rueda. No, nadie sabe quién fue. Por lo tanto, esta es una oportunidad perfecta para ocupar el passive voice. You use the passive voice when the agent is unknown. That's why we say somebody, because we don't know who it is. It was one person a long, long time ago. So the passive sentence will be the, bueno, ¿quién me dice? Mejor digan ustedes, ¿cuál es? Huh? What is the passive sentence? The wheel. The wheel. Uh -huh. The wheel. Uh, the wheel was invented by. Ajá. Uh -huh. Careful somebody, right there. By ahí somebody. Es, no. Ahí está el asunto. Como no sabemos quién es, entonces lo mejor es no mencionarlo. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ahí ya no ocupamos by. The wheel was invented. Y ahí solo decimos. 5,000 years ago. Okay. Queda mejor la oración pasiva precisamente por eso, porque no sabemos quién es el agent, no sabemos quién inventó la rueda. Alguien la inventó en algún momento, pero a saber quién fue. Entonces en ese momento no se usa, no se usa porque no sabemos. Porque no sabemos. Ajá. By. The no agent is by. unknown. Ajá. We don't use by. El by nos presenta al agent, pero si no sabemos quién es el agent, entonces simplemente no lo incluimos. The wheel was invented 5,000 years ago. En español sería la rueda fue inventada hace 5,000 años. ¿Quién la inventó? Vas a ver. Pero eso no es lo importante. Lo importante es que hace 5,000 años fue creada, fue inventada. So that's the first one. The second one, when there is no doer of the action and the fact is more important than the doer of the action. Para decirlo esto en una forma poquitito más práctica, decimos, we use the passive voice when the agent is uh, obvious. Example. The police caught to criminals last night. The police caught two criminals last night. That's the active sentence. What about the passive sentence? Who can tell me? Two criminals. Mm -hmm. Two criminals. Criminals were hmm? were caught by. Aha. 
by by the police by the police okay by the police bueno, vamos a vamos a cambiar aquí el verbo solo para que no nos confundamos mucho porque puede ser que más de una persona capture a un criminal bueno. arrested vamos a ponerle arrested ¿verdad? para evitar cualquier confusión the criminals were arrested by the police last night this is good but there is one problem. The problem is that the agent is obvious. Okay. ¿Quién más que la policía arresta los criminales? Entonces, no necesitamos utilizarlo. Solo decimos, two criminals were arrested last night. Dice, ¿y quién los arrestó? La policía. Ok. No es necesario mencionarlo. So, two criminals were arrested last night. O tal vez el ejército. Creo que tienen un poquito de potestad también ahí para eso. Pero eh, la policía en general. Two criminals were arrested last night. We don't mention the agent. The agent is the police. Because it's obvious. It's clear. We don't need to mention that. Okay. And also, ah, sorry. Questions? Okay. And also, what time is it? 8.58. We use the passive voice when the agent is unimportant. No es que la gente no sea importante, simplemente no es importante para entender la oración. For example, um, let's say they clean this office twice a day. That's the active sentence. What is the passive sentence? Mm -hmm. This office. This office. Was. This was. Uh -huh. mm, not was in this case. Uh -huh. Because when you say they clean, this is present simple, not past it's simple. Clean. It's, it's clean. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. it's, it's cleaned. It's cleaned. Uh -huh. It's cleaned. Twice. Twice a day. Twice a day. Correct. ¿Por qué no le ponemos by them? Because it's not important. De nuevo, no es que la persona que limpia no sea importante. Todos son importantes, ¿verdad? Para eso los contratan. ¿Ok? Sin embargo, no necesitamos saber quién limpió la oficina porque no nos estamos enfocando en eso. Nos estamos enfocando en el hecho de que la oficina se limpia dos veces al día. ¿Quién lo hace? A la larga es irrelevante. No nos interesa saber quién lo hace, sino más bien qué se hace. So, the agent, in this case, they is unimportant. ¿Ok? Más que todo en estos casos es que se utiliza the passive voice. When the agent is unknown, when the agent, well, for example, the wheel was invented 5,000 years ago. Who invented the wheel? We don't know. The agent is unknown. When the agent is obvious, two criminals were arrested last night. Who arrested the criminals? The police, it's obvious. And also when the agent is unimportant, this office is cleaned <clears throat> twice a day. Who cleans the office? We don't need to know, okay, to understand this sentence. So it's not important. That's how we use the passive voice. Si ustedes se fijan y aparece acá, the fact is more important than the doer of the action, ¿verdad? El hecho de que estas acciones se llevan a cabo son más importantes que quien las realiza. Y ahí es que utilizamos the passive voice. ¿Ok? Ahora bien, si nosotros consideramos que es, es pertinente mencionar al agent porque sí sabemos quién es, 
no es obvio y además si es importante, entonces utilizamos by, como el ejemplo que hemos estado viendo. The telephone was invented. Claro, sabemos que fue inventado, pero ¿quién inventó? Aquí sí, ¿verdad? Si sí sabemos quién es, no es obvio, ¿verdad? Y sí es importante mencionarlo. By Alexander Graham Bell. Bell. In that case, you use by. Mm -hmm. That will be the explanation. Tengo aquí una actividad, pero no sé si se la quieren llevar de tarea. Es bien cortita. O si la resolvemos mañana. Estoy ahorita tarea. tratando de decir the second, tarea. The second option. The second, the second the option. Second option. <laughs> Homework. Homework. The second, teacher. No worry, no worry. The second. <laughs> It's too late, teacher. Too late, too late. Bueno, ok, no. tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Ok, tomorrow. Pero va a ser con lo que vamos a arrancar, ¿verdad? Ok, okay. Va, va a ser una actividad de... de sí, es que igual si la deja de tarea, general. mañana la vamos a retroalimentar, me imagino. La vamos a retroalimentar, vaya. Vamos a hacer lo mismo. Vaya, eh, vamos a hacer esto, permission. vamos a hacer esto. Eh, la voy a poner acá, la voy a dejar en, en WhatsApp. Quien la quiera resolver, la puede resolver. Pero okay. si ya está cansado o no tiene tiempo, igual la vamos a resolver en clase mañana. Pero si alguien dice, no, ya la voy a hacer, bueno, hágala, no hay problema. La vamos a poner okay. acá. Solo la voy a explicar aquí muy rápido. It's a group activity, but you can work individually. Answer the questions, choose your answers from the box. When we check your answers, you will have to use the passive with by. Aquí hay un ejemplo de lo que van a hacer. Who painted the Mona Lisa? Who knows the answer? Who painted the Mona Lisa? Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. The answer is Leonardo da Vinci. Entonces, ¿qué va a decir usted? Me va a decir esa oración, pero en passive voice. The Mona Lisa was painted, Mona Lisa was painted by, by Leonardo da Vinci. By Leonardo da Vinci. Ok. Entonces, aquí están las preguntas. De nuevo, lo voy a sacar una captura de pantalla. Se lo voy a compartir por WhatsApp. Y si usted quiere resolverlo, pues eh, bienvenido sea, ¿verdad? Pero si ya está cansadito o cansadita, entonces no hay problema. Igual lo vamos a resolver mañana al entrar. Aquí se los estoy enviando. Ok, ahí está. All right, everybody. We're going to stop here. Thank you very much for your participation in this class. And I will see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, teacher. Thank you. Take good care. Uh, sure.